Winning the Delano Polo Award in car number four, Leonid Roderick in the first of the Volpes. Arto Kekin in car number nine is on the outside of the front row. Ebenezer Quiggles Jr.'s sponsorship ends after this race. So this is the last time we'll see the Sons of Core Hall livery on car 99. Going a bit further back in the field, Troy Adams, driver of car 18 in uh, the Delano sponsored Nomoto, is on a suspended one race ban after he placed his car perpendicular to the track. The Australian driver, uh, didn't really have much to say about that incident coming into this race. Both of the alert drivers, Michael Sykes and Chris Davenport, are starting from the back of the grid because of uh, respective penalties they earn after the round of Ohio. Davenport's penalty, uh, interestingly enough, actually stems from the practice incident he had with Manny Brown, and I think the Davenport's penalty is uh, nothing short of ludicrous. But uh, Sykes and Davenport both have very fast cars, as does Scott Soiler, whose uncle Marty, as you may have just seen, is starting his first TM Master Cup Series race since 1985. Anyways, with that being said, we have the first driver to fail to qualify this season, as Dalton Johnson, in his own a DJ Motorsports entry, was not quick enough to make the cut, and he is right there he is, car 91, DNQ. Dan, off to you. Thank you, Lance. Leonid Roderick and Arto Kakinen lead the field of 40 for 200 laps here at Grand Detour, which has seen uh, a lot of infrastructure changes, as you might uh, see throughout the course of the day. As Quiggles Jr. moves up to the second in that black and red 99 car as Roderick begins to pull away from the field. Roderick, car number four, Scott Bates trying to make some headway in uh, that red and silver car. 65-year-old Marty Stoidler is back in the Master Cup Series, as Lance mentioned just a couple minutes ago. It's the first time he's started a race since 1985, but unlike Manny Brown, uh, Marty Stoiler has been very, very active in racing. He'll be running Wisconsin with this team as well. Uh, he is, his best finish was second in Atlanta in 1980 in a race he could have won, actually. In fact, he probably should have won that day. Uh, anyways, here's Kurt Pliskin, car number 16. Uh, I didn't think we'd be seeing this paint job show up at any more races, but here it is. Kurt Pliskin trying to have a run on Quiggles Jr. in the 99. Quiggles slides up the track. Arto Kekinen's gotten by Quiggles. Quiggles going backwards as Adrian Devereaux in a link sandwich here. Klebno on the inside, Henton on the outside. Uh, Henton in the 11 car, the winner of the Cariola Grand Prix, is much higher placed in the championship. Uh, Klebno, though, could be a dark horse. Michael Sykes and Chris Davenport... Um, well, they were they qualified very well, but of course uh, their penalties meant they went to the back of the grid. Davenport uh, in that six car thinks he's got a pretty quick car, but he's been all over the place as usual this weekend. Michael Sykes has been more consistent this weekend, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is the first grid penalty he's ever received uh, in that five car. So the red five, we're trying to work his way forward. There's the 426 car. Uh, of uh, Chris Allen. This 36 car is being driven by Brazilian João Paulo Vidal, and he's only in this race because Evans, Evans Motorsports forfeited their Independence Trophy entry, so unfortunately no Lennart and no Charlie Waters on the grid. Um, so, big disappointment there, but Vidal, the Brazilian, has uh, been trying to break into this series for quite some time. Packer Carroll, car number two, having one of his better runs uh, of the season so far. He's dicing here with Quiggles Jr. and Kurt Pliskin. This, uh, this oval's not symmetrical. You may notice turn three is a lot tighter, and turn four, very, very wide uh, there. And that's what, res uh, and that what the banking has. Oh, we got a problem here with Christian Hans. The 14 car is slowing. Looks like he's got a punch. Oh, got tagged by Giovanni Rota, and the 14's around. And that draws our first caution. Johans would get that car going again. Marty Stoiler, car 54. Oh, uh, looks like he gets a little bit sideways. Got into, ba into the back of Vidal and D'Souza. Around goes D'Souza. Oh, he goes up into the guardrails, and Marty Stoiler, welcome back to the Master Cup Series, goes tumbling over end, end over end. Doesn't damage the roof on that car, surprisingly, but uh, he took out. Uh, Alessandro Rossini in the 42 Tutino just lost the back end of that car. Marty Stoidler been very active in short track racing ever since he uh, uh, ever since the 80s. So not like he hasn't been inactive or inexperienced, uh, even though um, that did look a little silly there. Several leaders pit are uh, pitting to check tire wear because it did rain overnight. Uh, looks like uh, some people are opting to stay out. Looks like Ebenezer Quiggles Jr. Uh, looks like Roderick may have just done a splash and go there. The Hodges Walter cars stayed out. Uh, looks like uh, Michael Sykes and Matthias Taub had some more serious issues. Uh, and they had fairly long stops. Uh, um, Matthias Taub in that 10 car is a little bit disappointed with that, I can guarantee. Because, uh, well, he's very high in the championship. Ditto Michael Sykes. So, the, the window of opportunity is... Is there for uh, 
for someone who does jump on that. Here's Rob Nelson in the 06. He's making his Master Cup Series debut. What, what is he doing here? Uh, he's on the inside of Mariano's. I don't think that's a legal start. Whoa, Chris Johans and uh, Ian Cooper. Rocket starts there as both those cars had just exited pit lane. Nelson in the 06 are making his first start during be Oh, no, he's in the wall. He moved up in front of Luciano Salverall, and this is a big mess. We've got, oh, at least 15, 20 cars. No, that's got to be the entire field. Oh, no. Robert Nelson in the 06 car just wiped out at least three quarters of the field in one fell swoop. Oh, Luciano Savarol, car number three, cannot catch a break this year. He's got such a huge run coming off two, and Robert Nelson just not paying attention comes right up in front of him. There's multiple lines coming off two, and he chose the one closest to the wall, which he really shouldn't have done because anyone will tell you that... Uh, Mariano Zavala upside down over there, so, and Mario, Z Mariano Zavala and both the EFR cars rolled in that uh, in that mess. We're on board Dan Lechleiter, one of the Independence Trophy can uh, contenders, and Lechleiter and his Tenere could take the Independence Trophy points lead, and considering that he's still running, he, uh, the opportunity is there for him. Anyways, there's where the trouble starts. There's Ian Cooper, hard into the wall in the triple seven. Troy Adams, nowhere to go, but into it. As uh, Lechleiter gets hit by somebody else. On board with one of the Lynx cars. This is Melanie Cleave now in the 12. The Swiss driver um, is just yeah, runs out of luck here. Nowhere to go but into the back of the 88 car. Gets hit by Kuznetsov. Gets hit by Cameron Taylor. There's VJ Pushound in the 54. Or 57, sorry. There's Kevin Dwyer in the 72. So Kevin Dwyer out of it. Big uh, disappointment there. Yulina Sova, lots of damage to that car. Here's Chris Davenport in the 6 car. And no. Oh, Oh, look, he missed one. Oh, Chris Davenport actually didn't pile into this wreck. Um, Scott Stoyler in the 70 car also looks like he may have missed this. So Davenport and Sykes, lucky. Roderick, big damage on the four car. Roderick's out of it, definitely out. Giovanni Rota in the 416 is out of it uh, as well. Now, here it is. There's Luciano way in the high line here, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Nelson. There's a middle line there, but he jumps all the way from the low line all the way to the outside when Savarals has a monster run coming off of two. And you really can't jump up two lanes quite like that. You'll take the rest of the field by surprise, and if Savarals slows down suddenly, well, then he risks wadding up the rest of the field anyway. So, um, uh, you see, there's Griffith in it in the 07, one of the promoter's options, both of the Katsivs. Chris Allen gets through this. Packer Carroll in the two car has some pretty uh, significant damage on there. Ben Atkins in it. Ugh, big, big mess down there. Peter Short in there as well in the 22 car. Both the EFR cars out of the race. Um, Ian Cooper not very happy about it. Adrian Devereaux, car number one, leads on the restart. David Krikorian in the 66, who didn't stop um, after the first yellow, is second. So really, I don't see too many cars out there that don't have damage other than Devereaux, Krikorian, and I think Quiggles Jr. may be the only three cars with that are running without damage. And maybe Lewis Kingston in the 17 as well. And uh, Zelda Ashby in the 55. Looks like I don't see any damage in that car. But uh, Power Sting Incorporated pulled the entire front end off uh, the 41 car. Greg Woodard right here. He's uh, still running reasonably competitive times. As you see, we have Pit Party here. Several cars coming in and out of the pits. Uh, in, in and out of the pits. Uh, just trying to make sure that these cars are fit enough to run. That was a very long caution. The pace car went very slowly to make sure that everything was cleared out of the way. There's no team orders at Hodges Walter Racing, as you can quite clearly tell here, because uh, DK is giving Adrian Devereaux all he's got. David Krikorian trying to got, trying to uh, extend his tenure at Hodges Walter Racing and proving that he can match Adrian Devereaux's speed. This week he has. Actually, David Krikorian has matched both Devereaux and Savarol. Every opportunity he's been in this 66 car, the only problem is, well... He's just not uh, one of the luckiest drivers ever in this to have ever driven a Master Cup car. David Krikorian's uh, streak of bad luck is uh, not quite infamous, but um, he's definitely not one of the luckiest men to ever drive a race car, but he currently has the lead. Uh, he hasn't scored points yet, but with the pace he's going and with the number of cars that are still left, as you see Kuznetsov with all sorts of damage in that car, uh, I have a feeling Krikorian might be feeling pretty good about a good result here today. 
But uh, he and Adrian Dever are, are going to duke it out for the lead. Chris Davenport and Lewis Kingston battling for seventh. Davenport is flying at the moment. He actually does have damage on this car. There's a little bit of front end damage on car number six and a little bit on the back as well. And uh, Davenport absolutely flying through the field. Kingston, no damage on that car, but it looks like he's just taking it easy. Daniel Lechleiter, car number 47, uh, is up there in sixth place. There's Chris Johans, who's still running, but now Johans is a uh, bad luck early in the race that puncture might actually come benefit him because he missed that big incident. As, oh, Lechleiter contact with Davenport. Davenport roughing him up a little bit. Davenport up the track into Kingston almost. Oh, uh, not necessarily the cleanest driving there by Chris Davenport. Uh, I think, uh, I think, I think he's getting a bit over enthusiastic and the team might have to reel him in just a little bit. Davenport now looks like he may have recomposed himself, trying to have a go at the Tenere of Lechleiter, who's going, who is definitely going to be racing as hard as he can right now because every point in the Independence Trophy is quite a big deal to him and uh, he could take the Independence Trophy lead after today. The two hottest Walter cars in first and second, uh, David Krikorian and Adrian Devereaux, two of the three, Luciano Sabral, of course, um, well, well back. But uh, the two of them just sort of uh, maintaining position at the moment. I don't see Adrian Devereaux trying to reel him in. Here's Ebenezer Quiggles Jr. in the 99, who's been holding on to third. A sea lander in his last run with this car as... Uh, this is Kerrigan. We need immediate evac. Belay that order. We're moving out. All ships, prepare to move away from Tarsonis on my mark. Uh, boys? How about that evac? What the hell is going on up there? It's done. Uh, well, Quiggles' engines let go on that 99 car, and, uh, it's certainly done for the core hall car as he goes out 35 laps into the race. I think he really could have had something for the front runners. Zach Duff, car 74. Uh, the Mitchell and Sons car is still running. Uh, the Mitchell and Sons Juno leaving. Oh, look out, look out, look out! Oh, I'm not sure if that's who that's going to be on. Davina Henton in the 11 car. Uh, I don't think they made too much contact in there, but the 11 car is dropping out of the race because it, uh, that little touch there punctured the radiator on the 11. Henton out. So that, um, that's another one of the championship contenders whose seasons really fall apart. And what are they doing in the background? Well, DK leads on the restart, as you see right there, with Adrian Devereaux and Lewis Kingston in tow. Gaspar D'Souza is sitting right there in fourth with Chris Davenport. Captain Eyeliner all over him. Like a bad smell. And um, there you see the two Otters Walter cars fighting for a position. Luciano trying something in the back of that emerald green car. Savarol won here last year. Uh, his last win actually uh, came here. Luciano needs to turn his season around desperately. DK and Adrian Devereaux though look like they have pretty clean sailing right now. That's Ben Atkins in the 50 car that's right there in front of Adrian Devereaux. I don't think Adrian's going to be too happy to see him. There's Captain Eyeliner as Michael Sykes affectionately calls him. Chris Davenport known for his some of his um, all more interesting choices in his private life. I think as what uh, well, actually, I think it's more his public life, considering the amount of makeup he was wearing for a, a certain launch energy ad that aired recently, uh, further lending for, uh, more weight to the nickname Captain Eyeliner. Gaspar D'Souza in fourth. He uh, looks like he might be recapturing some of his uh, good form from the start of the year, because despite how that rear end's been kicking out, the Portuguese driver has been very impressive all throughout the weekend here, and I don't think that uh, this is all by default by the fact that other people have dropped out and he's, the, and he's still running. He has legitimately been running very quick lap times all throughout the week. Two Hodges Walter cars up front uh, doing battle with each other. Adrian Devereaux, David Krikorian. Devereaux looking on the inside as DK slides up the racetrack a little bit. The Frenchman looking on the inside. Oh, almost made contact there. And uh, on the inside looking up the left side camera on this car. There's Adrian Devereaux. Whoa! Devereaux not playing. Uh, not uh, giving DK as much space as maybe he should, but there goes Adrian Devereaux right on by as uh, DK back to second. Scott Stoidler in the 70 car is hanging around in ninth place right now. Um, uh, the, the rookie stripes you see on the back of this car because this was actually um, one of Mika Posidon's cars because uh, they went to the backup car after Stoidler hit the wall in practice, but he's running in ninth. He's having a strong weekend so far, and... Uh, well, this is the, the first time we'll see the name Stoidler twice on the entry list because, of course, Marty Stoidler started, but he's out. Both Stoidlers will be running again 
at, was at uh, Road America. Greg Woodard is still running in this modified. Um, a Lycoia modified. I wonder if Lycoia builds modifieds. They seem to be building everything else and stretching their resources awful thin. But, um, anyways, uh, Chris Johans might not be having such a bad day because he's at 19. He's a few laps down, but he's running uh, a much quicker pace than uh, many of the cars in the top 10. So this 14 car might actually walk away with a couple of points because uh, there's not too many people still left in this race. So I think Johans might be in with a much better shot of having a decent points run than was previously expected. Lewis Kingston running in third, a solid third. I don't see a mark on the 17 car. That's why he's third. Although, granted, uh, he's been running very quickly, so he was. He, there's a reason he was in front of that wreck to begin with. Vijay Pushanda running in seventh uh, in this 57 car. I think a strong Indian driver like Pushanda would be very beneficial in the long term for the series. And uh, I'm surprised a bigger team than Great Lakes Motorsports didn't snap him up, especially given the heroics he was doing for Tutino last year. Gaspar D'Souza in the double zero car. He's got Arto Kakinen in front of him. Kakinen was in that, uh, that accident, but Kakinen wisely gets out of the way. Here comes Chris Davenport and Gino Kuznetsov. Captain Eyeliner coming in on the inside, trying to get on the inside, but Kuznetsov in the eight car is sort of getting in his way. But Kuznetsov appears to be faster than Davenport at the moment. So uh, D'Souza doing a good job at hanging on. Cameron Taylor is running in ninth, largely by default, but he's making the best of what he's got with that Manicor M1A1. Granted, that's not a good car, uh, but da but uh, Cameron Taylor uh, did has been known to pick up the pieces uh, in races where there is a lot of attrition. At Brands Hatch last year, he uh, did uh, just that and wound up with a top 10 in a race where many people were having brain explosions. So uh, Cameron Taylor does seem to have uh, that kind of ability to be the one person to not lose their mind when, uh, well, uh, everyone else seems to be doing so. Granted, I think uh, it's only one person that's been doing things wrong today. Or maybe not, because Arto Kakinen just hit the wall and Luciano ran into him. No, whoa, Arto's slow on track. I think the Hottest Walter boys expected a caution to come out right there because they both slow dramatically. Then again, Arto did chop both of them off. I don't think Adrian Dever is terribly happy about that. Yeah, I see a fist being shook at Arto Kakinen in that nine car. So, uh, anyways, we got an overhead look at this. Here's Arto Kakinen in the nine car. Here comes, uh, he's pushing up the racetrack very slowly, but, oh, uh, yeah, gets into the side of Luciano. He wanted to pit right there, I think, but Luciano was in the way, and Kakinen tried to get out of everyone's way, and some of the more observant of you might have noticed that Lewis Kingston in the 17 car just blasted right on past and is now leading the race. Uh, DK and Devereaux are now chasing him down. Interestingly enough, uh, Lewis Kingston... Driving a car carrying the decals of the of uh, a Chicago team that doesn't exactly win all that often, <clears throat> uh, but um, uh, uh, Krikorian and Devereaux are hot on his heels. Captain Eyeliner and Gaspar D'Souza going at it again for fourth place. Davenport, this is the best performance we've seen out of Davenport since the se since the season opener by far. He has normally been in the walls or off the pace uh, or both, uh, but. Davenport now, he's, he's going to have a crossover here from D'Souza. I think Davenport's been getting quite frustrated with uh, D'Souza. He hasn't seemed to be doing all that well in traffic, despite the fact that he does have a fast car. Lewis Kingston now, trying to hang on to the lead as long as he possibly can, but he's got a long line of traffic, and Adrian Devereaux right there. Adrian Devereaux, that car, uh, a lot of people have been calling it the killer shark, because it's very distinctive, and, uh, well, it is that kind of blue color. It's kind of a blue, that off bluish gray color. Very distinctive paint job, uh, despite the fact that it's not exactly a very bright car. Uh, VG Pushanda, the ninth place car, is going a lap down. That should tell you what kind of uh, what kind of damage has been done to most to the rest of the field by Robert Nelson and Luciano Savarol earlier in the race. Savarol being a, a very gracious back marker. Um, something that uh, oh Pushanda in the wall in the 57, Kakinen back in the pits in the nine car. Uh, so the nine, Arto Kagan having a disaster of a day. Uh, VJ Pushanda, the handling has clearly gone on that 57 car. And, oh, he's in the wall again. Kingston into the back of him, and the Avenger turns around. VJ Pushanda, and the yellow is out again. So, uh, well, VJ Pushanda didn't sound too happy about that. Neither did that team. Uh, oh, contact with the 17 in the pit lane. Contact. I think, I think Pushanda was waiting on him. To, in the pits, and because that was a sudden turn, I mean, he just suddenly turned hard to the right, 
coming out of his pit stall right into the side of Lewis Kingston. A lot of tempers flying, but the Avenger in that 17 car does not forget. So I would be very, very careful. Ryan Matthews has been in the pit lane for a long time repairing the 61 car. He's way behind, but in the way things are going, um, he might be in the oh, what's going on on the inside. Uh, Adrian Dever leading on the on the restart here. You got Davenport second. Then you have Greg Woodard still in the lead lap. Scott Sothler DK. Then you have Gaspar D'Souza, Cameron Taylor, and Lewis Kingston still in the lead lap. And then, of course, uh, Daniel Lecklight in the 47 car, the first of the cars, one lap down. Matthias Taub is actually hanging around in 10th, uh, despite that he's had problems. Oh, we almost had a big, uh, big collision right there. Davenport and Stoidler were definitely the big beneficiaries of this most recent caution. And obviously, Lewis Kingston, uh, largely due to VJ Pushanda, was the big loser. Uh, Gaspar D'Souza in this double zero car doing battle with Stoidler, who is who is steadily trying to make his way through the field and trying to have a run at uh, some of the front runners. Stoidler does have a, a fast enough car, but whoa! Um, I think Stoidler is just being very, very cautious and just trying to make the most of a good day here. Stoidler only has one win in the series, and ironically, it was driving for Hot as Well at the Racing in the same car that Devereaux is currently driving now. Uh, anyways. A lot of people that were uh, on Devereaux's team that uh, were there when Stoiler won his maiden and to date only Master Cup Series race. DK is catching uh, Chris Davenport for second place. Uh, the California, two Californians doing battle here. DK from LA, Davenport from San Francisco. Davenport trying to hang on on the outside in the alert car, but DK has other ideas. Goes right around the inside and sweeps into, the, into second. Almost had sweeps into the lead because DK has been running in the lead for much of this race so far. But now Devereaux in the one car currently holds on to that spot, and he's, well, pulling away from everyone else. He's very much in a league of his own today. Uh, he won here two years ago. Hottest Walters actually won the last two straight here, but never with the but not with the same driver. Woodard is still in sixth, and, uh, well, they don't appear to be trying to fix that car. They... You know, PSI might just want to pull more pieces off that car because he's gone faster than when he had the front end on it. Matthias Taub is running in ninth uh, right now in this 10 car. Not a bad point state. Taub uh, very much looking to secure his future with the team. It's hard to believe considering where he's been running in the championship's uh, consistency has been his, um, his secret weapon to get uh, very high up in the championship r uh, run. There are some rumors he can be going to Hodges Walter for 2014. Chris Allen is still running in this race. He's been so low key this year in his independent trophy run that it's easy to forget that he's actually been running or that 426 Motorsports has actually been running. He's running in 12th place. He's about to go another lap down, but uh, I think a good tip of the hat to Chris Allen for a, uh, a smooth run here. He hasn't been making too many mistakes, neither has that team. And here is Adrian Devereaux about to put another lap on Michael Sykes. Michael Sykes has not been able to um, to, to advance, uh, surprisingly, despite that uh, despite the fact that so many people are now out of the race. But now uh, Adrian Devereaux lapping Greg Woodard in the 41. And I don't think that's what Woodard wants to see. I think Woodard would uh, much, much prefer to see quite a few more cautions to keep himself on the lead lap. Gino Kuznetsov in, back in 11th is uh, losing another lap to Devereaux. That uh, red 8 car is now getting challenged by the red 5 of Michael Sykes. I don't think that's for a position. But because uh, the Etsov having one of his better runs, he's been uh, very smooth, very solid. He's, been, he's had a rich vein of form lately. And uh, the Russian drivers finally started to come to his own at Katsev, but still uh, behind Yulia Nasova. Cameron Taylor in the 28 car. This is the last run he'll have in this car. And uh, there goes, uh, oh, contact with the 74, and around he goes. Cameron Taylor into the pit lane. Oh, well, uh, he did bounce off the wall and off the front of the 74. That was right at the end of a fuel run, so everyone pitted, and Captain Eyeliner leads with, uh, with Adrian Devereaux in second. Matthias Taub restarted on the outside lane, but we're not sure why he did that. Uh, apparently, race control told, told uh, the 10 car to go to the outside, and that seems to be a very odd decision uh, because, uh, well, Taub is a, is a lap down. He should be on the inside with all the other lapped cars. Uh, Davenport goes by the 426 uh, car. Adrian Devereaux now trying to work his way up to catch Davenport as Cameron Taylor trying to keep that thing off the wall. Zelda Ashby quietly having a good run there in that 55 car. But Adrian Devereaux now working around some more lap cars, including Chris Johans, one of his 
uh, old title rivals. Finally, Chris Johans finally in a good car, but of course, as with Chris Johans is this year, once something seems to be going right, it all gets it all unravels very quickly. So he needs some luck in this series. Scott Stoidler in the 70 car, David Krikorian in the 66, doing battle here. Trying to work around uh, Kuznetsov. You have Jenny Kuznetsov, the very popular Russian driver, one of the uh, one of the great uh, new personalities of the sport. Scott Stoidler in the 70 car, one of those hard luck drivers, along with David Krikorian. It looks like both of them might get their chance to shine here, uh, but their teammates have uh, sort of been taking the glory away from all of them. Scott Stoidler in the 70 car. Uh, well, he's, he's making the most of what he's got. I'm not sure if he'll be in this car for Indianapolis. I don't think he will, which uh, is a pity, really, because uh, I think if Stoyler was able to show what he could do at one of the special events, it would really, uh, that might, turn his, uh, might get his career back on track. As uh, now, Chris Davenport is getting challenged major in Devereaux. Davenport's trying to shut the door on Devereaux, but, but uh, as much as he can, but Devereaux will stick his nose in there and will go all and will uh, well go uh, 110 percent to get around someone like Davenport as Devereaux now slides in front of him well, just a little bit Davenport holding the high line coming off four Davenport now gonna have to stay content with running in second because I don't think he has the yeah Adrian Devereaux is already pulling away from him that's not a good sign uh, Davenport might have burned up his tires trying to hold Adrian Devereaux off because Nietzsche is is up in the top ten now he's in ninth in this uh, number eight Katsiv car with Yulian Asova out, Kuznetsov is uh, definitely flying the flag for Katsiv Engineering and for, uh, well, all future prospective Russian drivers. He's very much a hero uh, in, uh, in his native country. Here is Ryan Matthews coming back on the racetrack. Uh, I think he's employing the Marcus Leonard tactic by just running at the finish, no matter how many laps down you are. Well, Zelda Ashby in eighth place has been having a very quiet run today. They did have some problems um, after that ma after that massive uh, crash in lap 13. So that's why Ashby isn't on the lead lap. There's no damage on this car. It's just that Ashby had so just lost so much ground in the pits that uh, it was very. Oh no! We got problems with the 66. David Krikorian has a puncture on that car. More hard luck for DK, but uh, at least it's not terminal this time. He's going to be able to get back on track, and hopefully he won't lose too much ground. I haven't been able to say this in, uh, too often, but he'll be two laps down. He might finish in the top ten still. Adrian, uh, looks like Adrian Devereaux in that uh, car number one has uh, got some more uh, traffic in front of him, one of those being Gaspar D'Souza and Michael Sykes. But look, you see DK with uh, fresh tires go right on by Adrian Devereaux. Devereaux uh, not really... Uh, that doesn't really have enough to really fight back there, but uh, DK is so far behind, it doesn't matter, really. Davenport into the pits on lap 157. This is a scheduled pit stop. Lewis Kingston is in as well. Uh, so, Davenport into the pits, and uh, Scott Stoiler expected in uh, fairly shortly. Hey, there you see also the 70 car of Scott Stoiler. Or you may not have seen it, but I certainly did. Scott Stoiler in the 70 car is peeling into the pits as well. Adrian Devereaux has been staying out though way perhaps way too oh whoa Devereaux wide into the into the outside wall there and he brings it in a lap 174 and that might have been a bit too late for um, the number one car now oh, De Devereaux is off the oh wait a minute they're one of, uh, one of the officials is waving at them they think they left the lug nut off on car number one this is a huge travesty for Adrian Devereaux who has been dominating this one Lung that off, they're gonna have to bring him back in. Car number one is going to be called back in from the lead of the race. He had a commanding lead, and by far the fastest car out there today, but is there enough time to get him back up front? I don't think so. Look how slowly he's creeping around there at the bottom of the racetrack. And now he's gonna have to bring that car back in the pits. He does so now, but huge, huge, huge blunder in the pits by Hodges Walter Racing. And that has been the undoing of, of uh, has been the almost the undoing of both of Adrian Devereaux's championships. His pit lane misfortune and the unreliability of the car. Not necessarily anything Adrian Devereaux did wrong there, but this puts Chris Davenport in the lead with Scott Stoidler as the only other car on the lead lap. The two alert cars have a lap on the field, and Davenport might take is now right now he goes on the inside of the 70 car. Davenport's trying to lap the whole field. 
I can't remember the last time that's happened where the winner has been the only car on the lead lap, but Davenport certainly wants to have his name next to that honor. Uh, as he slides it as he slides it around, trying to get his teammate a lap down, I don't think Stoiler is all that comfortable uh, with Davenport racing him as hard as he did, but they're certainly making things interesting out there, and so is Adrian Devereaux, who is two laps down, but over two-tenths faster than everyone else on the track. He's in seventh, but... Uh, I would expect him to be rocketing up the, um, rocketing through the field. Now there's there's Davenport in front of him. Uh, now Davenport is he gonna fight Adrian Devereaux? No, he's gonna give Devereaux an easy time. And frankly, I think that's the smart thing to do because Devereaux clearly is not very happy right now. He's uh, driving uh, very very aggressively out there to try to get back to the front as quickly as he can. I don't think he's gonna have enough time to get back to Davenport and actually be able to race him for the win. There's Michael Sykes, who's uh, been having more problems with that than the red, with the red five than he'd like to talk about. I, I can tell the, from the way he's driving that that car is pushing way too much for his liking. He's running in 14th. I think he's just trying to salvage a couple of points and go on to Road America, where of course he nearly won last year. But uh, that's certainly a track that Sykes he feels very strong at, and this red five. Uh, I don't think he can quite believe that uh, Captain Eyeliner has been uh, has taken over the lead of the race and that Stoidler is running in second. Just imagine what would happen if he didn't have as many problems. This could be an alert 1-2-3 perhaps. Davenport, try, he doesn't have too many laps left to lap the to put a lap on Stoidler in the 70 cars. Running in second, but he's certainly trying. And uh, as much of it, that actually is sort of a, an interesting thing to watch right now. Whoa, he's sliding it backwards. Almost took both of them out. This is, um, despite his best efforts here, I don't, I don't think, I think he might have been be burning off his tires too much. And, uh, well, anyways, uh, Stoiler now in that 70 car. Looks like he's going to be pulling away from Davenport just a little bit. White flag out for Chris Davenport. And, uh, given the start to his season, who would have thought that Davenport would be in a position? Oh, no, he's hit the wall! Davenport, he's all by himself. He's had nobody around him. He almost threw it away in the last lap. Oh, Chris Davenport gives his engineers a bit of a heart attack almost, but he wins his first TM Master Cup Series race here at Quincy. A race that I can only describe as an absolute crash fest. Davenport takes out the win with Scott Stoiler, the only other car on the lead lap, and Adrian Devereaux completing the podium. Chris Davenport, uh, during his post-race interview, gave a gesture over towards where Power Steering Incorporated's trailers were and said, and I quote, all of Lycoya's backroom politics didn't do them any good on the racetrack. I would have to agree. Davenport did celebrate this uh, maiden win, uh, much more so than uh, Adrian Devereaux did. Devereaux did not look very happy on the podium at all because this was certainly a race that got away from him. Lewis Kingston and Gaspar D'Souza had a good battle for fourth. That Kingston won on the last lap. Matthias Taub had to settle for sixth. DK seventh. Uh, Gino Kuznetsov in 8th, Ashby silently cl climbing up to 9th, and Chris Johans up to 10th after what can only be described as a very long afternoon for him. Dan Lechleiter and Chris Allen both did their independent trophy runs a lot of good. Cameron Taylor in 13th, that's not his best career finish, that's his second best career finish if I'm not mistaken. Michael Sykes in the red five, good point stay for him. That's about the best he could have gotten with what he had. Troy Adams in the 18 car, well, he rebounds from a very messy round of Ohio and, well, earns some respect back with a, with a respectable run. Zach Duff in the 74 and Vijay Pushan didn't really factor much into, into today's race. Greg Woodard in the 41 car had some more problems later in the race. And Ryan Matthews in that 61 car, well, there wasn't much left of that 61 car, but he brought it home. He was the last car finishing this race, and he was, uh, well, well over 70 laps down at the at the end of the race, but he finished. Arto Kekkonen in car number nine only completed 88 laps, and uh, there are some people questioning whether or not he'll actually get that one point, because uh, by the rules, uh, you do have to complete half distance uh, unless there is... Um, extenuating circumstances and at present he has that one point now what would happen if he wins the championship by one point I think that's a can of worms you should probably come to if that actually happens now let's have a look at the drivers championship after 13 races and Adrian Devereaux is on top of the championship with 382 points 
Campy, he's still pretty upset after how today's race went. Uh, losing 10 points probably doesn't, uh, uh, well, uh, probably doesn't help. But Matthias Taub in the 10 car is sitting in second in the championship. The Red 5 is third. Ashby fourth in the championship. And that 55 could FPO win the Master Cup Series championship in their first season with a new car? So... FPO is definitely in the title hunt with that 55 card. Davina Henton's t title hopes have been in free fall lately. Uh, Archo Kakin, of course, six in the championship. D'Souza's beginning to rebound, and Melanie Clevno needs some good luck. Leonid Roderick as well. Luciano Savaral needs someone to not run into him on the last lap or run into him, period, because Savaral, uh, I can't repeat what Savaral said uh, after uh, after he exited the, the, the number three car today, but... Um, he didn't exactly have too many uh, nice things to say about one Robert Nelson. And I don't think Robert Nelson may have had too many nice things to say about Luciano Savaral. Be that as it may, Scott Bates in the 88 car probably would have had a much better finish today uh, and may have actually been able to take advantage of um, where he is in the championship, but he got taken out, as did Peter Short. Yuli Sova didn't score any points, neither did Kurt Pliskin. Zach Duff, of course, had a solid run. Zach Duff has actually been getting a lot... Uh, getting um, the majority of Mitchell and Sons Racing's points, and against a highly rated teammate like Kevin Dwyer, that really is saying something about how well Zach Duff is doing in that card this year. Gino Kuznetsov, 17th. Yamino Tenshi is still 18th in the championship, despite not having run a race since the Cariola GP. Uh, Tenshi will be at Indy with the Clockwork Racing, uh, and Ebenezer Quiggles Jr., 19th in the championship, and Chris Davenport jumps up to 20th with his maiden Master Cup Series race win. Now, Davenport did mention Lycoya backroom politics, and I think the round of Wales might be most characterized by that. The big beneficiary of, from that race was Ike Durbin, and he lost the Independence Trophy lead in this race to the Tenere of Dan Lechleiter, and there's been uh, quite a bit of a, uh, a back-and-forth uh, sort of war of words between, Ly between Lycoya and Tenere in recent weeks, and, uh, well... Dan Lechleiter's four independent trophy races are done. He's sitting on 212 points. And I'm going to be honest, I don't think anyone's going to topple that. Uh, there's a couple of drivers that have a pretty good chance. Danny Sauvin, maybe. But other than that, I have a feeling Lechleiter could be sitting very, very safe on top of the points hall for the independent trophy. I also wouldn't overlook the 43 of Ben Haran. Haran has been very impressive in his limited showings. We'll see if he can possibly eclipse that, quite honestly, staggering run of Lechleiters in four races. The next time the TM Master Cup Series will be in action is at Road America in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin for the 2013 Round of Wisconsin.